All right, then in this video, I'm going to talk to you about binary logic. And binary logic is another way of talking about logic gates, things like this. Now, you might have seen these things before, um, particularly if you've done any electronics. Um, if you haven't, we're going to start from scratch. If you have, you might want to skip ahead to the next video, because this is going to be a, a very fairly basic, gentle introduction. Ideal for GCSE, and ideal for A-level students if you've not come across them before. But if you have, you might want to jump on, and you're doing A-level, you might want to jump on to the second video. So, assuming we've got the people who are just starting out, there are three logic gates you need to know about. And they are, uh, we'll do the easiest one first, the easiest one I think is not. Okay, not. And a not gate looks like this, it's a triangle with a circle on the end. And the logic here, because remember the thing at the start we said was it's binary logic. What does that mean? Well, binary is in terms of twos. Okay, and it's in terms of twos because this is an electrical signal, it's a cable, and it's either on or it's off. Okay, so it's a one if it's on, a zero if it's off. And the way a not gate works is if it's not on, in other words off, then it comes out as a pass. Okay, another way to think of these is true and false. Okay, one, true, on, all means the same thing. Zero, off, and false all means the same thing. So if it's off, it's not on, so the answer is true, because that was a one. On the other hand, if it is true, then it's failed the logical test of is it not tr is it not on? If it is on, it's not not on. Does that make sense? I think it does. And so the answer comes out as a zero. If that all sounds a bit complicated, it swaps. It swaps them over. A one becomes a zero, a zero becomes a one. That'll do. Okay, that's a not gate. And one of the things we do when we write a logic gate is we have something called a truth table. And a truth table describes all the possible inputs and all the possible outputs. And what we do is we label the inputs and the outputs. I'm going to use Q for the output. Um, some people, you might see a P, you might see a Z, you might see a K, any letter you like. Um, I'm going to use Q all the way through. And A is the input. Okay, so there are two possible inputs for A. Zero. And one. And that means there are two possible outputs for Q, and they're the opposite, one and zero. And being able to draw the truth table is really important because it shows you understand what's going on. And there are two ways you can draw a truth table. One is to remember what it looks like. It's a rubbish way of doing it, but it works. If you're asked to draw a truth table, you can just remember, you can learn what they look like. A better way of doing it is to understand how the gate works. Okay, so I, I can draw all the logic gates, all the truth tables I need to for logic gates, not because I can remember them, but because I know how they work. So we start off, we've got a zero, it becomes one, we've got a one, it becomes zero. It's a not gate. Second gate we need is called an and gate. And the logic here that we need, it looks like a D for a start, capital D. It's got two inputs and one output. So we'll call the inputs A and B. And what we're looking for, the question is, is A true and is B true? So the only time it's true is if that's a 1 and that's a 1. And if one of them isn't true, then that isn't true. Because it fails the AND test, the logical test. If they're both 0, is A true and B true? Well, it's not. So, so it's a 0. So when we draw the truth table, A, B and Q, the possible test cases are if both of these are zero, if it's just B, if it's just A, or if it's both of them. Okay? If you've done binary representation of numbers, you'll recognise these as zero, one, two, and three in binary, which is a dead easy way to make sure you get all the cases. Um, if that's a bit confusing, don't worry too much. But here is here's our four possible inputs. The outputs, the only one that's true is if A and B are both true, otherwise it's false. So again, it's not that I remember what it looks like, it's I understand how it works and I can figure it out. That will become important later on. The third gate we need is the OR gate. And that one I'm rubbish at drawing, but it looks more or less like a crescent moon. Kind of. It's not a very good version even for me. But again, we've got two inputs and an output. I can't. That's just too, too rubbish even for me. You don't need to be an art student to do these, but... You're going to be teaching people, I suppose, you should do it properly. Right, so there's our OR gate. And again, the truth table, there are four possible outputs, four possible cases, rather. 
nothing, just B, just A, both of them. And the question is, is A or B true? Well, in the first case it isn't, they're both false. In this case one of them is, in this case one of them is, in this case one of them is. Actually both of them are, but that doesn't matter. The question is, is A or B true? And if you look at A, it is true. So A or B, yes it is, it's true. Yeah. If I ask you, do you have a £5 note or a £10 note, and you've got both, then the answer is yes, you do. OK, so there's the logic gate for O, and the truth table for O. And those are the only three that you need, certainly to GCSE level. A level, you need a bit more, but GCSE level, if you can remember a not, an and, and an or, then you'll be okay. The only thing that gets a bit tricky is when you start to combine them. And at GCC you shouldn't be given anything too complex. Um, a typical GCC question might be something like this. You might have an AND gate with a NOT at the end. And we call these A, B and Q. And all you do is your logic, your truth table rather, A, B and Q. Four possible cases. And if A and B, this is an AND gate, the only time this can be true is if A and B are both true, which is this one here. Yep, these three will fail an AND gate. So this will be a 1 at this point here. This will be a 1, 0, 0, 0. We then go through a NOT gate that flips it round. So instead of being a 1, this becomes a 0. Instead of being a 0, this becomes a 1. Instead of a 0, this becomes a 1. Instead of a 0, this becomes a 1. And so this is the truth table for this diagram, this, log this set of logic gates with an AND and a NOT. Okay? If it's a bit much to do it in one step, what you can do is this, and it depends on how the, the exam paper is written, whether you've got room to do it. But you could put in a C here. And you can do the middle step. Yep. And if there isn't room in the table, if as long as there's room to the side, you can always write it to the side. Um, but A and B, we know A and B, it's only if that one's true. So we can do an AND gate dead easy, and then to do a NOT gate, we just invert it. So it's exactly the same process. I'm just writing out the middle step if it's a bit much for me. And one more question, slightly harder perhaps, but only slightly, is to start here and have a NOT gate first, and then an OR gate like that, so A, B, and Q. Again, our truth table, A, B, and Q. I'm going to put a C in again, just to do the middle step. C there. So, four possible cases. C is the opposite of A, because it's gone through a NOT gate. So that swaps round. And then we have an OR gate between C and B. So B comes through here, C comes through here, if we all B and C, that's true, that's true, that's not, that is. Okay, so there's the output of our truth table. Again, you could do that in one step. What you're looking for, if I just rub these out, if you want to do it in one step, it's the opposite of A or B. Opposite of A is 1, 1 or 0, yes, that's true, 1 or 1, yes, that's true, opposite of A is 0. So 0 and 0 is false. Opposite of 1 is 0, 0 and 1, that's true. Okay. Again, if that's a bit too much, feel free to do the middle step. But that is about as complex as it gets at GCSE. So that's the end of this video. The next video will go on and do some more complex stuff um, suitable for A-level.